I will now call on the next speaker, Knut Simonsen. Um, Knut is, um, works at the um, University of Faroes and is Associate Professor uh, in Oceanography and he's going to be talking about uh, some approaches to ocean farming. Uh, thank you. Knud, please, the floor's yours. Yeah, thank you very much, Kate. Um, now, um, I shortened the title you've seen in, the, uh, in your uh, program a little bit. And uh, now I think most of the presentation this morning have been quite, um, or quite a large area, or a large, a long time. So now I will narrow the focus mainly on the local perspective, what you're doing in the Faroes, and in the end, widen a little bit to a more global issue. Uh, the history, when I came back to Faroes approximately 10 years ago, I worked more mainly on tides. And one day there was a director of a small company, he knocked on the door, and he said, I want to utilize the natural good ventilation here to produce high quality fish. I put a green uh, a green fish label on my pro uh, products. Uh, the small companies make an experiment, and unfortunately, they did not succeed. But I think, I thought at that time that was, was that's the way to go for the Faroes, because we have extremely good ventilation, and not only in the Faroes. Many of the uh, coastal areas around in Scotland, Norway, Canada have very good ventilated waters. So. What I would like to talk a little bit is the physical setting for fish farming. Um, although the fish farm has 30, 40 years of experience now, it's very, been very much focused on biological issues and chemical issues, and very little is done on the physical uh, environment for a fish farm. Uh, learn a little bit on the, the physical demands for optimal fish drive, and we'll end a little bit at the development development of the uh, cages. Um, the wave condition on the Faroes uh, is quite harsh. We have very few so-called sheltered area where, uh, where, is pointer? Sorry, yeah. where the wave height is less than four meters. It's only very few areas. Compared to what the fish farm do internationally, it's more or less open ocean close to the coast in the Faroes. There's very few sheltered areas. And even already today, many of the fish farms today are what is classified as fully open ocean, not a place. Uh, we are continuing a little bit to work with the uh, wave modeling. We run a PhD project where we have looked at the combination, that the effects, what is the combined effect of the tidal current and waves. That's not done before in wave modeling. Because in some places you find that the tidal currents will, will um, drive the waves into a, an area and that can damage the, the, uh, the damaging effect on the, on the installations there. Another part is the tides. We have been working on tidal model for several time and it's not only, not only computer games, it also involves quite a lot of measurements, and we use that to do maps to show how is the tidal currents on the Faroes. Um, see the speeds there? If you used to stay in a boat, it's quite uh, 100, one meter per second, two knots. Sounds not much when you're going into a fast going boat, but it's quite, quite large speeds for fish farm. And please note that uh, the blue area is in the fjords, and there we can find most of the fish farm. We got similar maps or similar conditions in our, like Scotland, Norway, Chile, and whatsoever, where they have fish farm. Only very few locations where very strong currents, which are similar to this or even higher, in particular in the Canadian waters. Uh, a phrase which we used quite a lot in the Faris some years ago is we want to do fish farming in strong currents. I think we should rephrase that and see what are the constraints set by the ocean currents to perform sustainable and profitable fish farming. Um, to take a look at fish tribe, a uh, useful measure is that we are looking at the swim sorry, a swimming speed as both the length per second, 
uh, there's uh, the length of fish that direction, sorry, it's spelled in Faroese. And they have the, uh, the uh, speed up there. And for salmon, for instance, uh, use of speed, cruise speed, if you like, is between 1 and 1 1.5 bottle per second. If you're doing that and put it together with the map we have, this is a small salmon, 20 centimeters, we got very low, or about 30 centimeters per second. But uh, that means that uh, we do not have to go into the fjords in most places for the salmon. Okay, as the salmon is growing up, half a meter, fairly, maybe as far as there, about two or three years uh, salmon, um, so about 50 centimeters per second. And you can, say, you can see yeah, we, can, we are able to farm that fish, that species, in almost the entire area of the ferris. Um, so that, when talking salmon, we are talking fairly high currents. But we go to other species, like cod. Cod is, um, do not like high speeds. 0.4 bottle length per second, it seems like this, uh, the, the try velocity. It can do faster for a very short while, but that is what it like to, to stay in. Um, doing the same exercise here, putting the juveniles, See, we have about 50 centimeters to, as a maximum, about 30 centimeters per second. Going above that, we will stress the fish, or it will use most of the energy to swim and not to grow to a market size. But um, at least in the pharaohs, we look at where we can find the fish farmers, the fish farms. We find them mainly in the blue areas. But it's not only in the pharaohs, we've seen the same in our all other fish farming countries in rather slack water areas. So the question is why? Um, we go into blue water areas, we've got some limits from the bottom, current limits on the bottom. And that's called suspension. They come from, there are some waste from the aquaculture activity. If the speeds are above about 10 centimeters per second, the waste will be washed away. Otherwise, it will stay there and accumulate and cause problems. We had to deal with that. Um, that's what the regula regula regulatives and fish farmers also are doing today, most, not only in Ferris, but also in other countries. And if you sh should put that as a mark, we put all the fjords as black areas. You see the same in other countries. Um, but uh, that can be handled. Uh, most of the knowledge about this is found from other countries. Uh, currently, we are running a in collaboration with the Fisher Laboratory and the, and the PhD project, where we look at what is going on down there. Other thing is, this fish is need, needs oxygen. And the oxygen consumption increases with the swimming speed and also with temperature, higher temperature, more oxygen, and also if it's stressed somehow. Stressed by something is disturbing it, also by fish, or by when, it eats, when uh, the fish is eating. Um, to take us average here, just for calculation, the fish use about 3 milligram oxygen per kilo fish per minute. We notice here that the uh, cod use very much, some more, little bit more oxygen than salmon, for instance. 